From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss what's going on with Amazon's ad business. Joining us is Destiny Wishon, who is the CEO at Better AMS, which is a retail media agency focused on helping the world's best brands scale their ads effectively. Through a combination of innovative technology, amazing partnerships, and strategic leadership, Better AMS is the perfect partner for increasing your advertising sales on Amazon. And today, Destiny and I are going to discuss how Amazon advertising has matured. All right, here's the first part of my conversation with Destiny Wishon, the CEO of Better AMS. Destiny, welcome to the MarTech Podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. Super happy to be here. Excited to have you on the show. And I have to say, I'm a little surprised while we were talking before we started the interview, you mentioned that you are from Bentonville, Arkansas, the home of one of the biggest e-commerce players in the world, Walmart. But you're an AMS, an Amazon specialist. How the heck does that happen? Yeah, so directly out of college. I mean, I was still completing my senior year, getting a general business degree. I got hired as an intern at an agency that got started up in our area. And that agency came from Walmart World. So they were taking all of their Walmart connections and basically being like, hey, Amazon's not easy, but we'll help you figure it out. So I got thrown right in. As an intern, within six months, we signed a very, very large brand and I got handed a $10 million quarter budget. So I had to learn really quick. I got thrown in six years ago, and I haven't been able to leave since. It's a little bit of a sin to be working on Amazon in this area, but I deal with it. So does that make you an Arkansas Razorback? Is that where you were working before the agency? Yes. The appropriate thing to say here is pig suey. Is that correct? Woo pig, it is. (laughs) Woo pig. Okay. All right. Well, You started off earlier in your career working on Amazon, and you've obviously been doing it for a while now. You're the CEO of a very well-respected Amazon advertising agency. Talk to me about the platform. How has it grown as you've gained more experience working on Amazon advertising? I would say that there's three really big angles that we typically look at when we talk about the platform maturity. One of them is how the customer habits have changed. I mean, in the last six years, especially in the areas that are dominated by Walmart, we've seen the loyalty grow exponentially on Amazon. And we know how powerful Amazon search is. Like no one goes to Amazon and types in a product to watch a video. They go to YouTube for that or they go to Google for that. So when we're looking at advertising, a lot of the largest brands in the world have started to see the power of that dynamic. Being able to serve an ad directly to someone who is 100% looking to purchase So I think that's one of the biggest things that we've seen a lot of maturity in just the customer purchase habits and brands understanding how powerful that real estate is. It's probably the first big one I'll hit on and I'll stop and see if you have any comments on that. Well, what I'm hearing from you is that Amazon is popular because people understand the advertising platform A exists and B is a great way to drive purchases. Is everybody that's buying on Amazon using that valuable real estate to drive e-commerce purchases? Or is this now seen as more of a general advertising platform like a Google or a Facebook? Definitely a general advertising platform. Really? Amazon's DSP has really been one of their biggest focuses over the last few years because with any search platform, you're going to be limited to inventory. 
So you can only serve so many ads on page one before the customer experience starts to be diluted. And Amazon's seeing that now. I mean, you go to page one as a customer and you see a headline search ad for sponsored product ads, for organic placements, a video and search carousel that's sponsored, and then editorial recommendations. So the customer experience has slightly gone down because of Amazon advertising making Amazon so much money. So in my opinion, the best way to kind of mitigate that and not ruin the experience further is to start using their non-endemic advertising assets and their demand side network. Okay, go over those two things one more. You said non-endemic advertising. What does that mean? Non-endemic advertising is Amazon basically saying, hey, we have all of this customer data. We have this really premium inventory. We have all of the news sites. We have our own media sites, prime video, things like that. And we're going to allow anyone, whether or not you sell a physical product on Amazon, to access that advertising inventory. So similar to a Google shopping experience. So let's say I'm a car salesman or a state senator. I can actually access Amazon's shopper insights and run ads on Amazon targeting that type of customer. So if you've ever been scrolling Amazon and you see a tiny little ad on the left-hand side that is an insurance company or Geico runs a ton of these, the government runs quite a few, that's a DSP ad that's non-endemic. So talk to me about the conversion rates. I run a network of podcasts and we're looking for people who want to start their own podcasts. Can I just go onto Amazon and say anybody that's listened to a podcast or bought a book about podcasting on Amazon and start targeting them with ads to get to my website? Or what's the experience? What's the click through rate look like? You could. It's very, very top of the funnel with that type of advertising because again, most of their data is bottom of the funnel. It is people that are looking for product base. So it's a lot more disruptive than maybe a traditional remarketing ad where you're targeting everyone who bought a Yeti mic and then remarketing that person. That's going to be a lot better KPIs and stats. So that's probably why we typically only see the Geico's of the world, the government properties, you know, the people who are spinning on awareness. So if you're looking for an awareness campaign, it's one of the best things you can do. But if you're looking for kind of conversion metrics, it's not going to be fantastic. All right. So tell me a little bit more about how the platform has grown. We're looking at the advertising, not just being specifically e-commerce, but you mentioned that a lot of it is awareness focused unless you're selling a specific product. What are some of the new bells and whistles that have been added into Amazon advertising that marketers might not be aware of? So on the search side, the PPC side, we've seen a ton of different changes. One, creative is a huge focus on Amazon's end. I think they're really shifting to prioritizing brand builders rather than people that are just launching products back to back to back. So we're getting image assets. We're seeing an expansion in video advertising. That's been a really big focus on Amazon's roadmap. So we now have the ability to run videos directly on Amazon within search results on the product detail pages, but that's expanded out into being able to run video on Prime TV and some of those networks as well. I saw a stat the other day. I don't remember what is top of mind, but I believe it was around 70% of homeowners have connected TV. So think about the opportunities to run an ad directly to a connected TV. But now we get actual stats rather than a traditional national media campaign, which is usually a lift test or based on impressions. We can actually utilize connected TV to be a lot more direct. So that's something that's being opened up. And then you can overlay certain aspects of your audience within that connected TV, you know, certain income ranges within the household and all of the other opportunities to get a little bit more granular with your targeting versus a regular commercial campaign. So we'll stay away from the direct e-commerce platform comparisons, but I want to know how you think that Amazon compares to some of the other major digital advertising portals. You've mentioned that while Amazon not only has this rich repository of e-commerce data, but they also have the connected television assets through Prime Video. How do you compare what's happening for Amazon or how should marketers compare what's happening on the Amazon platform as opposed to what they can do on the Googles, the Facebook networks, and even the TikToks of the world? I would say the biggest thing is the data and analytics we can get from Amazon. I know Google's similar in this area. They've done a fantastic job. But when I'm comparing, again, customer path to purchase... Amazon purchase intent is insane. That is the only reason people go to amazon.com is to search for a product and potentially purchase, whether that's in retail or on .com. 
So that power is insane. Even as something as simple as if you came to me and you're a bio freeze, right? And you wanted to target some terms that is pain relief. We can do that on Google. But again, if someone's looking for pain relief, we don't know if they're looking for medicine, stretches, different how to's. But if they go to Amazon and they type in pain relief, we know exactly what they're trying to buy. So it's having the opportunity to serve an ad directly at the nearest bottom of the funnel that you can get in one of the highest converting platforms. All right, last question I have for you today. I'm going to ask you for a couple of tips. I've never done any advertising on Amazon. I'm pretty experienced in Google. I've done a lot of Facebook advertising. I'm dangerous enough to run some programmatic ads myself. As somebody who's just getting started and realizing, oh, shit, Amazon is not just to specifically market a product, but also services, you can build awareness. What are some of the things that people need to be aware of to get started on Amazon for the first time that they might not get out of the box? I would say conversion rate optimization has to be prioritized. I mean, everything comes down to if you're on Amazon, what that listing looks like and what you're driving the customer to. So I think that's a basic, but when you see Google and Amazon getting so much more competitive because of the value of their advertising platforms, you can't just throw traffic at any and every product and hope it does well. Four years ago, we could. Nowadays, we're competing against all of the largest ad tech companies in the world. So we have to really make sure we are driving traffic to the landing page that's going to convert. So let me ask you to go just a slight bit deeper in terms of understanding the conversion rates. How does Amazon's technology stack up with the other advertising vendors? Are they allowing for direct conversion pixels? What's the tracking methodology look like to understand that conversion event? On the search side, it's direct. We can get it on the keyword level, which is where it's so powerful. I can say, hey, for again, if we're using IC Hot as an example, I can say for Pain relief, we have a 25% conversion rate on this term. And that's average for kind of what we'd see in that space for a brand. On the flip side, we could go as broad as, you know, targeting general category. Hey, everyone in the pain relief category, we have a 12% conversion rate. So I think that's, again, where it's powerful. On the DSP side, when you start getting to more of the pragmatic, there's so much variance and capabilities that your conversion rate's really going to go anywhere, you know, 5% to 40%, depending on the type of strategy you're running. Can you get down to the product level targeting? Like if you're BioFreeze, can you target not just Icy Hot, but like Icy Hot 6.4 ounces travel size? Yep. You can get as direct and as the simplest, in my opinion, advertising you can run. They just didn't make a ton of investments in their UI, I don't think. So it was pretty complicated. But we can see all of that data on the exact product level, the keyword level, we could target our direct competitors and put an ad directly on our competitor product detail page and say, hey, we have a 12% conversion rate here, which is really strong when you're thinking about serving an ad and convincing someone who's viewing another product to instead buy your product. You know, it's an interesting thought exercise here for marketers who are not in e-commerce like me. I don't think about advertising on Amazon. I don't think that I consider it to be an e-commerce platform. So great, I'm not going to even prioritize it. But in reality, Amazon's got not only a rich repository of e-commerce data, they also have other assets that they can layer on top of it to help you reach your awareness goals, do your conversion tracking. Maybe it's time for marketers to think beyond the e-commerce box when they start considering Amazon as an advertising solution. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Destiny Wishon, the CEO of Better AMS. Join us again tomorrow when Destiny and I continue our conversation talking about the core differences between Walmart and Amazon advertising. If you can't wait until our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Destiny, you can find a link to her LinkedIn profile in our show notes, or you can visit her company's website, which is betterams.com. That's better, B-E-T-T-E-R, A-M-S.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. 
And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.